This week at Starbase, Booster 12 undergoes a new round of cryo testing at the launch site. And while crews are hard at work on various tower modules over at Sanchez, Module 1 is finally rolled out and stacked at the launch site. Now let's dig into this week's update. Starting off this week on Friday morning, one of the steel feet that are the interfaces between the tower's base and the prefabricated modules was lifted off its corner and set down nearby. Presumably, this was to allow workers access to the mounting points. A few hours later, it was reinstalled. About a half an hour later, the foot on the opposite corner was removed and placed on the ground nearby as well. Around that same time, the Saren CC8800 crane began the process of laying down. With bad weather expected at the end of the weekend from Hurricane Barrel, the crane was being lowered to better protect it from the anticipated high winds. Later that afternoon, the second foot that had been removed that morning was lifted and reinstalled onto the tower base. Overnight, following a couple of rounds of cryogenic testing the week before, Ship 31 was transported back up Highway 4 to the build site. Once there, the Starship was rolled into Mega Bay 2, out of the elements ahead of the coming storm. Late Saturday night, one of the two-point lifters was taken into Mega Bay 2. Once inside, crew set to work hooking the lifting jig up to one of the building's bridge cranes. Once attached, it was lifted above the bay's central work stand before the door came down to block our view. On Sunday evening, a booster transport stand was picked up from the rocket garden and taken on a short trip down Highway 4 to the build site. The stand was eventually parked outside of Mega Bay 1 as the weather in Starbase took a turn for the worse. Overnight, Starbase withstood the stormy weather from the outskirts of Hurricane Barrel. The storm eventually turned towards the north, with the worst of it passing by the facility. On Monday morning, the door of Mega Bay 2 reopened and Ship 31 was rolled out of the building. Down the road at the launch site, the yellow LTR-1220 crane raised its boom and set to work. Over the next few hours, the crane was used to reinstall the remaining two feet back onto the tower base. Around 11 o'clock that morning, SpaceX's LR-11000 crane began to raise its boom back into the Texas sky now that the storm had passed. Around that same time, with Ship 31 back inside of Mega Bay 2, crews went up to attach the lifting jig to the rocket. That afternoon, the lifter was disconnected and Ship 31 was once again moved out of the building. Once outside, the Starship was rolled across Remedios and into the Sanchez site and parked near where the former engine installation stand was. First thing on Tuesday morning, the door of Mega Bay 1 was open and Booster 12 was rolled out for the first ever trip to the launch site. The Flight 5 Super Heavy made its way through the ring yard and onto Highway 4. Once the first stage rocket arrived at the launch site, it was taken directly to Orbital Pad A and parked between the chopsticks. Once the booster was in lifting position, the chopsticks were closed and raised to the vehicle's hard points. Meanwhile, back up the road at the Sanchez site, crews were hard at work installing cryogenic piping in the third prefabricated module of Tower Number 2. That night, preparations were complete and Mechazella lifted Booster 12 off its transport stand. The Super Heavy was then placed onto the launch mount for a fresh round of testing to get it ready for Starship's fifth integrated flight test. A few hours later, the rocket's transport stand was moved out of the launch complex, back up the highway to the build site, and parked in the ring yard. Around that same time, Ship 31 was moved out of the Sanchez site, back across Remedios Avenue, and into Mega Bay 1. Once the Starship was inside the building, the booster transport stand took the opposite path as it was moved from the ring yard to the Sanchez site. In the early hours of Wednesday afternoon, the booster quick disconnect was retracted from booster 12 after having been connected in the dark of night. Meanwhile, the big Saren's crane picked up the tower module load spreader for the first time and positioned it over the top of the first prefabricated section. Back at the build site, Ship 31 was lifted off the ship thrust simulator stand and transferred onto an awaiting ring stand on the right side of Mega Bay 2's doorway. That evening, the booster quick disconnect on the launch mount was reattached to Booster 12 ahead of testing. 
A few hours later, Ship 31 was once again lifted by one of the bridge cranes in Mega Bay 2. This time, the Starship was transferred to the work stand in the back left corner of the building. Around midnight, the sounds of igniter tests could be heard coming from the orbital launch mount and Booster 12. First thing Thursday, the first prefabricated module of Starbase's second launch tower was lifted by the crane. It was slowly moved into position above the tower's base and lowered onto the previously installed column feet. Crews then worked quickly to secure the module in place as SpaceX was preparing the launch site for testing at Orbital Pad A. As the tank farm was being spun up for the day's testing, a small leak was observed in one of the cryogenic lines in front of the storage tanks. A steady stream of cold gas vapor was seen coming from a flange connection between two sections of pipe. It's not yet clear what the testing was for, but frost was observed on the booster even though the subcoolers never seemed to be utilized. It's possible that this was just some partial tank farm testing following the work that's been done since the last launch. Once the road was reopened, cryotankers started arriving to offload the new consumables and replenish the farm following the short round of testing. That afternoon, Booster 12 was seen performing some test actuations of its four grid fins. A short time later, the ship quick disconnect arm performed what appeared to be a full speed retraction test before being swung back into position. It's worth noting that the timing of the arm moving out of the way during launch still appears to be an issue, with the arm having taken damage during the multiple flight tests. Switching over to Florida, on Saturday morning, Just Read the Instructions was towed out to sea in support of the TurkSat 6A launch. About an hour later, a short fall of Gravitas was towed into Port Canaveral carrying Booster 1073 from the Starlink Group 8-9 mission. And just a couple of hours after arriving at the dock, the Falcon 9 booster was lifted off the deck of the drone ship and transferred to the dockside stand. That evening, fairing recovery vessel Bob followed in the wake of Just Read the Instructions as it also left the port for the upcoming Turksat launch. On Sunday, support ship Go Cosmos motored back into port following some fairing recovery training offshore. This vessel is new to the SpaceX Marine fleet and was likely added to help shoulder the increased burden from the rapid cadence of the Falcon 9 team this year. Monday evening, Falcon 9 Booster 1076 lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40. For its 15th mission, it sent the Turksat 6A communication satellite on its way to geostationary transfer orbit. Just before lunchtime on Tuesday, dockside processing was complete for Booster 1073. The Falcon 9 first stage was then lifted and laid onto the transporter for its return to SpaceX's Roberts Road facilities. On Wednesday evening, Bob returned to port after successfully recovering both of the fairing halves from the Turksat launch just two days before. About 13 hours later, Just Read the Instructions also returned to port with a Falcon 9 booster from that same mission. Notably, it seems that either the landing or the return trip may have been a little rough, as the rocket seemed to have a slight lean. Within a few hours, the rocket was lifted off the drone ship and placed onto the dockside stand for processing. And finally, that afternoon, a short fall of Gravitas was towed out to sea in preparation for the next Starlink launch as SpaceX continues with their record-setting launch cadence. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, guys, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.